instrument of ten strings. He says, sing to him a new song. Play a skillful with a shout of joy. I want you to make a joyful noise unto the Lord tonight and get excited that God Almighty, I have come tonight and I will not go home the same way I have come in the name of Jesus Christ. Open your mouth and make a declaration that Father in the name of Jesus Christ, I have come tonight. I have come to be with the King of Kings. I have come to be with the Lord of Lord. And I will not go home the same way I have come. In the name of Jesus Christ, Father, you will meet me at the point of my needs, Father. In the name of Jesus Christ, every body in all of shall be lifted up tonight. Every chaos situation shall be set in tonight. Every messy situation shall be carried and counter God tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ, Father, we pray, oh Lord, we commit tonight's service to your holy hand. Lord, you will send your angels, oh Lord, tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ, you Father, we pray tonight that everyone on the side of my voice, they will enjoy, they will have a different encounter with you tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ, thank you, everlasting Father. We bless and we worship you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You are the for us. We are grateful. We are grateful. Oh, Lord.
According to the prophetic word for this year, this year is our year of restoration. As Joel 2 and 25 says, that I will restore everything that the locust ate. The Lord is going to restore everything that the locust ate. And if you are wondering, like Jacob was wondering, and prophet Isaiah says in Isaiah 40 and from verse 28, he says, do not worry because... Have you not heard? Have you not known that the Lord is the everlasting God? Have you not heard? Have you not known that the Lord is the everlasting God? Isaiah 40 and verse 28. Have you not heard? Have you not known that the Lord is the everlasting God? He is the creator of the earth. He is the creator of the ends, not just the earth, but of the ends of the earth. Why are you worried? Why are you gloomy? Why are you heartbroken? Why are you giving up? You cannot give up this month of January. It is a month to just rejoice before God and give him praise for the things that he is going to do. This is the month to lift up your head before him and say, Father, I thank you because I'm beginning to walk into my restoration. Everything that the enemy had stolen in the past years, you are restoring them to me, O oh God, because my spiritual life is being restored and touched back. My spiritual life is being restored and elevated. Everything that the enemy had stolen is being restored. This is the year. And it can only be restored if you remember that he is the everlasting God. He is the everlasting God. And what does the Bible say in the, in the following verse, Isaiah 40 and verse 29? That He is the everlasting God. He creates the ends of the earth. He creates the ends of the earth. And if you know that this year you want to be restored by God, He says that our God does not sleep nor slumber. He does not get tired. He does not faint nor get weary. He does not become weary. And he gives power. He gives strength to the weak. Are you weak this evening? Lift up your hands and say, Father, I 
thank you because you are restoring my strength. I thank you because you are giving power to the weak. You are giving strength to the faint. You are giving power to the weak. You are restoring my strength, oh God. And so, Lord, I thank you because you are restoring my inner strength. For me to walk through this year, my strength is being renewed. My strength is being restored. You are giving power to the faint. You are God. And so, Lord, we give you praise because you are good. Even in the battlefield, in the battlefield, God is still good. Ask him, Jehoshaphat, if you doubt. Ask Jehoshaphat. He will tell you that he only had to sing a song that give thanks to the Lord for he is good. He is good. It doesn't matter whether you have a good, a good voice to sing and to praise God but you can sing in your own way and say father I thank you because this year is my year of restoration and so I give thanks to you I'm giving myself to you Lord in prayer and supplication because you are restoring us according to the prophetic theme of this year I begin to walk in my restoration I begin to walk in the fulfillment of the prophecy in the mighty name of Jesus Christ he is a way maker and if you doubt ask Elisha ask Elisha he came back to the Jordan and after Elijah had been taken up Elisha comes and he is faced by the river Jordan Elisha says oh God of Elijah where art thou and he put the clock on the river and the river opens and he walks through that is going to happen to you this year because God is restoring all the closed doors he's opening them wide for us he's opening those doors for us this year our ministry is going to grow a hundredfold this year that dream is going to be manifested in the mighty name of Jesus Christ this year our businesses our investments are going to blossom better even better in the mighty name of Jesus Christ this year our children are going to excel this year our families are going to remain intact this year we will not see any broken marriage this year the Lord is restoring the joy in every broken family because no man will leave his family no woman will leave her family this year God is restoring us. Lift up your hands and begin to thank God. Because this year, He's restoring us. He's increasing us. He's blessing us. Because Joel says in 2.28 that after I have restored the years that the locusts ate, then I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Father, we pray tonight, O oh God, we pray tonight, my Father, not for anything but for restoration of the inner man, that God, he may be connected even better with you. Because when the inner man is connected better with you, everything else comes, Lord, into manifestation. We pray that God, that the spirit man will be strengthened and refilled and re-energized and ready to be launched in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord, as a church. We thank you because this is our year. This is our covenant year. This is our covenant year. This is the year of this ministry. This ministry is going to stand and men and women shall run to this place to quench their thirst because God is doing great things in this place. And so far, God, we thank you because your word is true. Every word that you've spoken up upon the people of God, you are able, Lord, to bring them into fruition. And so we stand, Lord, by the prophetic release for this year. That everything that the locust ate shall be restored. And already we are seeing the fruits. Even before the end of the first month. We are enjoying the restoration already. And so Lord we wait on you. With our eyes lifted to you my God. For you are our God. And besides you there is no other. We love you Lord. From the depths of our hearts we love you. And we praise you oh God. For you are good. And your love you have God Lord is everlasting. Receive all the honor and all the glory. And the church say, Amen. Hallelujah. Let's put our hands together and appreciate the Lord.
Amen, amen, amen. We give praise to God for God is good. Amen. He is good at all times. Glory be to God. Amen. And Paul tells the Colossians in Colossians 4 and verse 2 that commit, devote yourself in prayer. And above all, be thankful. Amen. Brethren, for us to enjoy the restoration this year, we have to be thankful. God is looking for someone who is thankful. If you were thankful last year, try and be more thankful this year and see. Amen. Already, I am telling you, I'm already enjoying the restoration. God is doing it. Amen. And when I was waiting upon God, the Spirit of God told me, My son, don't worry about how and when. Leave the how and when to me. Just continue to wait upon me. Lift your eyes to me. Because I am the Lord God. I am the everlasting God. Amen. And so this year, brethren, we should not be heartbroken. We should not despair. We should not give up because God is going to restore us. And for you to enjoy that restoration, you have to begin rejoicing gladly. When you come into this place, come dancing. You know, just come to... When I was, the... when I was looking at the word of God, brethren, how these people used to touch the heart of God, it was through thanksgiving. It was through thanksgiving. Not even through prayer. It was through thanksgiving. Because when you pray, you are asking God. But when you give thanks to him, he even wonders, how is he thanking me and, and he has nothing, that I haven't done nothing to him or to her. How is she thanking me? Let me not begin to preach. Amen. Let me put the Bible away. I love you all with the love of Christ. Amen. You know, you know the, the, the good problem when you are praying and waiting upon God, things begin to double in the inside. Amen. And that is uh, why we love praying and fasting. And so I want to take this opportunity very quickly to invite you, uh, to welcome you first back into the house of the Lord. We thank God for our senior pastor, Dr. Steve Fagule, and our covenant mother. Let's put our hands together and appreciate our parents in the Lord. Amen. It is so wonderful because the Lord commands us to do that, that we may honor the prophet so that we may be prosperous. For me, I want to be prosperous, so I must honor the prophet. Amen. Amen. And also to walk in obedience. Amen. So if you have a praise report, you have your testimony, kindly arise, come and share. Let me see by a show of hand if you want to share your praise report. Testimony. You have your testimony. Amen. 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 Safei has a testimony. Uh, if we can have a microphone. Amen. Where are they? the younger generation? They've run away. Oh, there they are. Okay. Joshua, you need to give the microphone to Sister Faith. Amen. Amen. Joshua is a wonderful son. He is doing great things at his age. Amen. Amen. When I see him play the drums, I can just dance. I dance with, with joy. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Joshua. Amen. Sister Faith, you're welcome. I will not trash you, but I want you to observe time. Amen. <laughs> yeah. I won't I won't trash you, but I want you to observe time. Amen. Amen. So you choose you choose one. You want to do testimony, uh, song money, and preach money. <laughs> okay, first I want to give honor to God. I thank God. I love God that love me first. Amen. 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 So much. Amen. And I just thank him. I praise him. I thank him that I know him. I thank him that I have liberty in him. And my praise report is just I'm uh, being on the fast and just being quiet and hearing for God. I used to, you know, you say, but I'm just being attentive, just being quiet, then being obedient. Now, obedient is your sacrifice, and then you get the blessing. Yes. And then just how many days you just start to fast and Whoa, God did this bless me, and I, I thank Him. So it's a praise report, just being obedient and listening. Because you do want to do, we have our agenda, what we want to do, but when you be obedient to God, He orchestrates everything for you. And I thank Him through my prayer. When people call me, I already have a word. I'm already paid up. I'm already ready. They say, stay ready. Get so ready and stay ready. And I thank God that I'm there. I'm there. I am because He just like, even with my kids, I'm like, okay, Lord. We make time for everything else. 
and we give him the last. Amen. Go to bed. Oh, Lord, you know my heart. I'm just going to say the Lord's Prayer. I'm going to just say a little prayer. But he has got me in part where you don't put him first. Mm. Like you're supposed to put him first, and he orchestrates the whole day. Amen. And I thank God. That's what praise is for, for me. And I pray to you guys, pray for me that I go stronger and stronger and be obedient to the Lord. Amen. God bless you. And you are actually growing stronger and stronger. Amen. Amen. You are there. You want to share a testimony? Please, this is the best day to share your praise report. Amen. Amen. And brother, but I, I can see you have a praise report. I can see in your eyes. <laughs> Amen. Yes. So today, today, today I put you on the spot. <laughs> I, I, give you, I give you time when you... <laughs> Amen. Amen. It, it's so wonderful, mommy. Hallelujah. 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 <laughs> it's wonderful. We, this is our house, amen? So feel free. Don't feel under pressure. This is a, is a special place that God has given to us. Let's feel free. Hallelujah. I just want to bless God for what he did yesterday and today. You know, the devil is a, a devilish devil. Yeah, so when he sees something big coming your way he just want to distract you put some other things in there to you know to get your mind away from what god has in stock for you so yesterday i um i had planned not to travel but sometimes somehow you know my husband made a statement and then i said okay maybe i just go so and i switched the table around the person that was supposed to help me do the trip and i told him don't wait i mean don't worry i'll go ahead and do the trip and you stay at the shop. Couples of hours after I was gone, she called, she said, Kimmy, five people just came to rob me. I'm so confused. I said, calm down. You know, don't worry. We'll, we'll. They left, they're gone. It's okay. So I, um, we, I was on my way. Then I said, okay, I jumped in the car and I started coming. And today again, and, and Mary called me. Hey, somebody was going to grab the, 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 somebody, a guy came to the shop. I just want to take my, um, my cash register. And I'm like, God, it, it's okay. And she was panicking. She was, she was really scared. And I said, it's okay. God is in control. I just want to bless God. It could have been worse. How about, you know, they have some people, they go to their store, they shop them. They, you know, they killed them. So it didn't, it didn't go that route. But at the same time, the ones that came, they tried. But I said one prayer. I said, God, they will not know peace until they know God. So that was my prayer. Even when the police came, do you want to press charges? I said, all you need to say, amen with me. Those people will not know peace until they know God. And that has been my prayer. That nobody has actually come to rob me the no peace they always come back to apologize you know that this is what happened to me i have no no peace since i tried it and that was my prayer until they know god they will not know peace but i just want to bless the name of god no lies was taken they tried it god's name was actually glorified and the name of the lord i bless you and i give you all the praises for safety and protection in jesus name amen amen, amen. the enemy is a loser Amen. God will protect our property and our lives. Amen. Amen. Any other praise report? Amen. Great. So we're going to uh, kindly request the praise team to arise. And let's also arise at this point as we invite the father of the house to come and bless us. Even as we prepare for the word. Amen. Hallelujah. Father, Lord, we thank you tonight. We give you praise. You say, unto you shall the gathering of your people be. We have come to gather before you tonight. May your name alone be praised in our lives. May your hand be revealed in all we do. Amen. May our total restoration be evident to all to see. Thank you, everlasting Father. Glory. Glory. Glory to 
worship God tonight I appreciate him for he is a lamb that was upon the throne to give you victory power honor blessings wisdom riches strength to restore all that the enemy has stolen from you to restore peace to restore your purpose and your vision men will try to distract you but God will refocus you on your vision men will try to take away your purpose but God will restore that purpose for fulfillment the discovery of your purpose is what set the pace for the fulfillment lord thank god again for his mighty hand for his recovery agenda for your life this year for the restorative agenda of god for your life this year give him all the praise blessed be your name in jesus mighty name we have worshiped as we remain standing, Hosea chapter 6 verse 2 and 3 says, The first two days he will revive us, and in the third day he will raise us up, and we shall live in his sight. Today is the third day of our 21 day prayer and fasting and the first two days he revived us he rekindled us he re renewed our strength i'd like you to lift up your voice and just thank god for revival thank god for replenishing you thank god for refreshing you thank god for giving you a new set of zeal 
and passion for the things of God. Open your mouth and just appreciate God that these first two days, yes, today and on Monday, He revived you. You that you never knew you can wait upon the Lord in a fast, but by His grace and by His mercy, He sustained you, He sustained you, He rekindled the fire of revival in you, He rekindled power in you, He renewed your strength, He, en he encouraged you when others were trying to discourage you. Father, we thank you. And he said on the third day, he raised us up. Let's thank God for raising you up from the floor. For rekindling your purpose. For empowering your purpose. Lifting you above challenges. Lifting you above limitations. Bringing you to your high places. Raising you to be, to walk upon your high mountains. Lord, we thank you. We give you praise. There is none like you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And in verse 3, he says something. After he has revived you, and after he has raised you up, he said, then shall we know if we follow on to know the Lord. Then shall we know he said, they that do know they are God, they shall be strong and they shall do exploits. He said, then shall we know if we choose to follow on to know the Lord. is going forth, is prepared as the money, and it shall come unto us as the rain, as the latter and former rain upon the heart. I want you to speak to the Lord tonight and say, Lord, as I seek to follow you, Lord, I want to know you. I want to know you. I want to know you in the name of Jesus. As I seek to follow you, even this year, even this year, let there be a rain, a rain, the latter rain and the former rain. Then shall we know if we follow on to know the Lord. He's going forth, is prepared as the money. And he shall come unto us as the rain. As the latter and the former rain. Lord, let there be a new refreshing, a restoration a fruitfulness in our life in our ministry in our country in our nation in our in our in our ministry open your mouth and just speak to the Lord tonight yes Lord Father Lord we thank you we give you praise Lord we give you all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. He said, how, how will they know? How will they understand? Except they are taught. It is the impartation of his word that brings knowledge of this nature many people know about the ways of God but very few know the nature of God many people are attracted by the acts of God but many very few really have subjected themselves to the nature of God they that don't know they are God. If you want to see the heart, if you want, you don't just want to see the heart, you want to be the manifestation of the heart of God, then you need to know your God. He said concerning Moses, 
God showed him his acts. He showed him his ways. And then he showed the acts to the children of God. It is the way of God that leads to his acts. And it is true knowledge that you can know the way of God. So tonight, we shall be hearing and we shall be taught about the ways of God. We shall be impacted with knowledge. Because it is true knowledge that we can know God. We can know his personality. We can know his nature. So as we, this 21 days, as we settle down to pray and to fast and to afflict ourselves before God, it is our understanding of the nature of God that will cause our life to have that turn around. And so tonight, I'd like you to join me as we invite Pastor Sophie to share with us about the knowledge of God. To release the word of impartation. To release the word that will bring us to the knowledge of who God is. And I know at the end of tonight, your life and my life will not remain the same. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, God bless you, woman of God. God bless you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. We give God all the glory. Thank you so much, Pastor, for the opportunity. And I pray to God that God will speak to us tonight in Jesus' name. This is the will of God that we may know his ways and that we may know him. You know, when you know him, you'll know his ways. When you know him, you will follow him as he walks. You'll follow him as he lives. And Jesus said, his sheep will not follow a stranger. They will not listen to the voice of a stranger. So if you know you are God, you will not follow a stranger. Amen. So let's pray. Father God, in Jesus' name, we thank you this evening. Lord, we thank you because you have always loved us. And you have always loved to be in fellowship with us. You have always liked, loved to walk together with us. You have always loved to carry us, Lord God, in your arms. You have always, Lord, wanted to talk, to speak to us and guide us and give us good life. Father, this evening we thank you. Because, Lord, you are showing us the way, Lord God, to be intimate with you, Lord God, in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you because, Lord, we are not going to confuse your voice with any other voice. We are not going to confuse your ways with any other way in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for your word this evening. And, Lord, as we hear from you, God, let this word change our lives. Let this word correct us. And let this word bring us to a total restoration in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we thank you and we give you glory. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Put your hands together and have a seat as we hear from God this evening in Jesus' name. I just want to thank God for this opportunity and uh, thank God for his word. Our year of total restoration. Total restoration. Not, not restoration in some areas, but total restoration. Amen. This is, this is a great year for us. And the Lord gave me a message about restoration. And it says restoration must begin from God's purpose or God's assignment. It must begin from God's purpose or God's assignment. You know, God created us. And God did not just create us the way he created other, other creations. There was a specific reason why God created us. And why he created us 
in his own image. You know, other creations, God spoke and they came into being. But a human being, God took his time and created this person. In his likeness and his image. Because he had a purpose with this image or with this creation that he was creating. And so there is a place where we are attached from the time of creation. There's a place where we are attached. There's a place that there's something that was in the heart of God. That caused him to create you. There's something that God felt. There was a vacuum that God felt that someone has to fill this vacuum. That's why he created you. That's why he created me. And it takes understanding for us to go back to that place. Because that is where our restoration will begin from. We have to go to get the place. That place of let us create man in our own image and likeness. Genesis chapter 1 verse 26. What caused God to, 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 to reason together with Jesus and the Holy Spirit? That let us create man in our own image in our own likeness because there were things there were there there were tasks that this man was supposed to do as an extension of God's hand into the lives of many and so he created us and this place A place of I knew you before I formed you in your mother's womb. And I ordain you to be my prophet unto the nations. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 4 and 5. God knew you before he formed you. Before nobody knew that you would exist. He knew you before he created you. He knew you. That's why I said there was God saw a vacuum that he felt like he can he has to create you and to ordain you and to and and, 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 and to and to anoint you for that task. He's telling Jeremiah. Jeremiah was trying was trying to to uh, to play himself. He was saying no no. No, you, 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 I, I, I'm, I'm not fit for, for, for the task that you're calling me for. He said, before I formed you, I knew you. So don't try, don't try to play games with me. I knew you and I, you, I created you because of this. To, and I ordain you for this. To be my prophet and to all Nations. So we have been ordained for specific assignments. And there are callings and ministries on every believer's life. God has placed a calling. God has placed a ministry. God has placed a task. God has placed an assignment. God has placed a purpose, his purpose, upon your life. And his will is that you may satisfy that purpose. Is that you may work out that purpose. Praise the Lord. And so, there is a specific grace and provision for every God's assignment and purpose in our lives. Every assignment that God has given unto you. Every calling that God has placed upon your your life. There's a specific grace for that calling. There's a specific grace 
for that assignment. There's a specific grace for that ministry. And there's a specific anointing, specific oil working upon that assignment. Backing up the assignment. Even as you walk, as you, as you, you walk upon the assignment rightfully, then the anointing backs it up and it manifests. God himself manifests himself. Praise the Lord. And so, we have to know that we are not just in this world because our, our parents gave birth to us. How many, how, how many parents have, have planned to have ki- children, but they have, they have no, no children? How many parents have given birth to many children, but now they don't have even one child? We are here. We were born specifically for God's purpose. To fulfill the purpose of God. And so it's, however, there is a great danger when we try to shift from one aside, from God's assignment to the other. Trying to please people or make yourself comfortable. Praise the Lord. That calling on you is a yoke. That's what Jesus said. That my yoke is easy. He didn't say, he didn't say, I'm taking away, I'm taking off the burden. He says, take up my yoke. So you are still having, is that yoke? That you have to carry it. You have to walk with it. You have to walk in it. Paul tried to convince God. Say God take, take out this, this thorn in my flesh. So that I can be comfortable. But God said... No, I'm not taking it because my grace is sufficient. The grace that I have placed upon you because of that calling is sufficient for you to handle, for you to handle that thorn in that flesh. And so it's, it's so risky to try to change the callings, to try to change the purpose of God. And many people have done that. You say, I think, uh, you know, God called you to be an evangelist. Bringing people to Christ. Bringing people to Christ. You preach to them. You direct them to, 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 to the shepherd, to the pastor. To take care of them. And you get to a place and say, I think I'm... I'm, I'm I'm making so many, many disciples. I'm bringing so many people to Christ. I think I should open a church. (laughs) I think I I should have a church of my own. So that I don't benefit that pastor. I'm as an evangelist. Because they can hear me when I preach to them and they give their lives to Christ. I can open a church and, and have all this. God called you as an evangelist. He didn't call you as a pastor. So they, you make yourself a pastor. You abandon the work of an evangelist. And now you come and start pastoring a church. A, 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 the calling that was not yours. When these people come, they don't see that grace. They don't see that that, that they don't feel that anointing, the convicting anointing that they felt when you were doing the work of an evangelist. And when, because now you are doing this, that grace of an evangelist, that anointing of an evangelist, God withdraws it. Because what God will never allow 
is for you to frustrate the grace that he has released upon you. So you continue with your, with your, uh, with your being pastor and you are called as an evangelist and people start going. They go and, and, you, and you close the church. You go back again to the streets. <laughs> See? And you start saying, God will restore. will restore all my members. God will restore them back to me. You are not called for that. Then you go to the street. You start telling people about Christ. They say, this man is crazy. He doesn't know even what he's talking about. Because that anointing that was upon you was withdrawn you have the word you can you can you can tell them all the all the the, 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 the books of the gospel you can recite to them but they don't see they don't see any they don't see anything that can connect you, them to you and to Christ so it's very very risky it's very dangerous if God has ordained you with, one, with, with a calling, make sure you understand which calling God has called you in. And it may not be wrong. It may not be the wrong thing that you are doing. But, in fact, you may be convinced that you are doing the will of God. Because I'm preaching, I've preached to this, I'm preaching to these people, but they don't have any child to go. Why can't I open the church? <laughs> so you, you, you are doing it, you, you, you mean well. You are opening the church for these people. But you are not, you are not ordained to be the pastor to these people. So it is, sometimes you may feel like you are doing the right thing, that you are pleasing God but the risky thing is when you move from the purpose of God and start create another purpose that you want to pursue which God did not ordain you for and so we can we can we, we can see in the, in, the, in the example in the Bible about Saul Saul was anointed to be the king and not a prophet. Even though at one occasion he, 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 he found himself prophesying with the prophets. But he was anointed to be the king. Because there was a prophet that God had ordained for him. So he was to be the king and King Samuel was to play the role of the prophet. But it, things went wrong when he, when he assumed the role of a prophet, Prophet Samuel, to offer the offering. Can we read uh, 1 Samuel chapter 10, verse 10 to 13? It says, And when they came thither to the hill, Behold, a company of prophets met him, and the Spirit of God came upon him, and he prophesied among them. And it came to pass, when all that knew him before time saw that, behold, he prophesied among the prophets. Then the people said one to another, What is this that it came unto the son of Kish? Is Saul also among the prophets? <laughs> Verse 12. And one of the same place answered and said, But who is their father? Therefore is become a proverb. Is Samuel also among? Is Saul also among the prophets? And when he had made an end of prophesying, he came to the high place. Oh. The same first Samuel chapter 12, chapter 13, verse 9. 
See, when, some, when Saul found himself prophesying, and people were asking, is he among the prophets? You know, sometimes pride enter into us. When people start to ask, ah, so you can do this, so you can prophesy, so you can, so I say, oh, I'm good at it. My name is prophet so and so. When did you become a prophet? So you prayed for someone and this person was healed. Why can't you become an apostle? Say, now you're talking. <laughs> Before you know it, apostle so and so. He says, and Saul said, bring hither a burnt offering to me, a peace offering. And he offered the burnt offering. Verse 10, we're going to verse 14. He says, and it came to pass that as soon as he had made an end of offering, the burnt offering, behold, Samuel came. And Saul went out to meet him, that he might salute him. And Samuel said, what hast thou done? And Saul said, because I saw that the people were scattered from me, and, thou, and that thou comest not with, within the days appointed, and that the Philistines gathered themselves together at Mishmas. Therefore said I, the Philistines will come down now upon me to Gilgal, and I have not made supplication unto the Lord. I forced myself, therefore, and offered a burnt offering. And Samuel said to Saul, Thou hast done foolishly. Thou hast not kept the commandment of the Lord. He forced himself to, 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 to offer a sacrifice. He did not keep the commandment of the Lord, thy God, which he commanded thee. For now would the Lord have established thy king, kingdom upon Israel forever. 14. But now thy kingdom shall not continue. The Lord had sought him a man after his own heart. And the Lord has commanded him to be captain over his people. Because thou hast not kept that which the Lord commanded thee. He did not offer the offering to any other God. He offered an offering to God. But the role that he played, he played a role of a prophet. He was not a prophet. He was a king. Someone else had a calling of the prophet who was supposed to, to, to do this. But because he just assumed it and he forced himself to do what God did not anoint him to do. His kingdom, his, him being the king, he was rejected being the king. And at that time, God sent Samuel to go and anoint David on his behalf. So Saul so continued to be the king by authority, but not with anointing. But not with anointing. Because the anointing was, had already been transferred to David. God can transfer the anointing from you and give to the person that he feels he's going to obey and he's going to carry out the task which he has given unto him correctly. And so, some of us have lost the anointing because we jumped from one calling to the other. Because it was not assigned to that ministry. You lost the anointing. You lost the grace to do what you're doing because you, ju you, 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 you jumped. You shifted 
from the purpose which God had released that anointing or that oil for, and then you took another task which was not God's will, which God did not ordain you for. Jeremiah was very comfortable with who he was. But God did not ordain him to be what was making him to be comfortable. God had ordained him to be the prophet, to be the mouthpiece of God. And at some point, he was, you had to go through humiliations as, as, a, as a prophet. And so sometimes you go through humiliations and, and, and persecutions because you are doing the right thing. But that should not be the reason why you should not derail from the right calling and start doing the other calling because that is comfortable. The grace is sufficient. The grace that accompanies that calling the grace that accompanies that ministry, the grace that accompanies that assignment is sufficient for you. You say your grace is sufficient for me because when I am weak, then that is when I am strong. Because it's the grace that is working, not you. And so some, some people have dodged God's calling and called themselves in different callings for convenience and want to still operate in the same anointing. You can't dodge God's calling. You can't dodge God's anointing. But you want to ride on the same anointing and the same grace. If you're not doing the right one, no anointing, that anointing is not for the, for the other one. And so, the moment you start your own business within God's business, he removes the covering. He removes the covering. If you start your business within God's business, for, for those people who do business, you know there are some people like that. You are doing business with them and they start the business within that business. <laughs> and they start benefiting within that business. And they don't want you to know that they are doing that business. They are having a business within a business. And so that is what some of us do. That I have been called to be the servant of God, to take care of the souls, to take care of these people that God is bringing unto me, to, to lay my hands upon them and they, they are healed, to pray for them and they receive their answers. And then you begin to say, for this kind of prayer, you have to give $500. For this kind of anointing oil, you have to give me $1,000. Is that what is not going on? Is that not what is going on now? And the Bible says, you have freely have you received. Freely give. But we start the business within the God's business. And then when God withdraws that anointing, when God withdraws that
even before he created you. So in God's things, there is no plan B. It's either you are doing the right thing or you are not doing it. There is no plan B. Where are you getting the plan B? God said, this is what I have ordained you to do. You say, God, I have another plan. I can, I, I, I can, I can, I can contribute. I want to contribute. I have another plan. In God's things, there are no plan B. It's either you are doing it or you are not doing it. You don't say, I, 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 I thought, let me do this way to support this. There's no plan B. It's either you did the right thing or you did not do it. You are called to do what God wants you to do. Not what you think you can do. Not what you think you can contribute. The grace of God. God has given us the spirit to help us know what to do. So it's either you are doing it or you are not doing it. So if we do, if, 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 we, if we, are, we are not doing it, we are we're considering plan B, we are going, we are doing it because of disobedience. See John the Baptist. John the Baptist, before he was born, he was, his, 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 his existence was prophesied. It was announced. What was he supposed to do? To come and prepare the way of the coming Messiah. To be the voice of the one crying in the wilderness. To be a voice unto repentance. But something went wrong. After he stopped being that voice of the, the, cry, the voice in the wilderness and assumed a role of a judge. When he went to judge Herod, Herod, because Herod had taken Herodias, his brother's wife, and he told him, you can do this. He was doing the right thing. But was that why he came? And he was thrown into prison because of that. He stayed in prison until he started doubting, is this Jesus the one I was uh, the one I was preaching about? Is he really the one? He sent his disciples to ask Jesus, are you the coming Messiah? Jesus sent them and said, go tell them the blind can see. And the dead are coming to life. Because what you are ordained to do. Even see, even Jesus. Jesus. He, 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 he was anointed from his mother's womb. And Jesus himself testified about him. Saying among the prophets, there is no one greater than John. But he ended up dying, just dying like a goat. They just slaughter him because Herod, Herodias' daughter had a birthday. And she wanted, and, 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 and Herod promised her the, a gift. And she said she wants, she wants John's head. The anointed man from the womb. The one that was anointed to come and make straight the ways. Cry in the wilderness. Bring people into repentance. But he derailed and went and be a judge. Praise the Lord. I hope, I hope we, we are getting something here. He was doing the right thing. But he, it was not his calling. And I, from that time, there was no 
close relationship with him with Jesus again. Because what was attaching him to Jesus had been withdrawn. May God help us. Amen. So Jesus never condemned, he never judged the world, but loved it and saved it because he knew he had come at the, that particular time as a savior. And so, you know, sometimes I'm surprised to see people abandoning the great commission and becoming judges to extend or to the extent of sending pictures of people they have already condemned and judged and concluded that they are wicked. You just send people's picture on, the, on, on, on Facebook and say, these people are wicked. Who made you the judge, the judge to that extent that you can judge someone and condemn someone that he is wicked? Jesus never did that. So as we come to the point why we were we were created and that great commission that Jesus sent us go ye into the world and preach the good news and teach people, teach them as I've commanded you baptize them make them disciples and those who believe let them be baptized and those who believe shall be saved. And those, those who don't believe, they shall be condemned. So you don't condemn them if you have not prayed to them. And even if you pray to them and they don't believe, you are not the one to condemn them. You have been sent to preach the good news, not to condemn. Praise the Lord. And so, it's time that we really need to know what God wants from us. You know, for us to experience total restoration of all we have lost, we need to understand and know whether what we have lost is to the, we have lost to the enemy or God allowed it so that we may come back to him. There may be, there's a possibility that what you lost, you lost it to the enemy. But another possibility that what you lost, God allowed it to happen. So that when you come back to him, he will restore it. Praise the Lord. And so, this word of restoration, sometimes when we hear it, we start thinking of what I had and I lost. And, and I, be, I, just, just, I just believe this was the enemy. This was the devil who didn't like, him, who didn't like me to have this. He took it away. He, so we have to know. Is, was it, did we lose it to the enemy? Or God allowed it to happen? So that he can bring us back to him. Let's read uh, Amos chapter 4 verse 6. Amos chapter 4 verse 6, we're going to, uh, to verse 13. It says, and I also have given you cleanliness of teeth in all your cities, and want of bread in all your places. Yet have you not returned unto me, says the Lord. And also I have withholden the rain from you. When there were yet three months to the harvest, and I caused it to rain upon one city, and caused it not to rain upon another city. One piece was rained upon, and the piece whereupon it rained not withered. So two of, 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 of three cities wandered into one city to drink water, but they were not satisfied. Yet have ye not returned unto me, says the Lord. I have smitten you with blasting and mildew, 
when you are gardens and you are vineyards and you are fig trees and you are olive trees increased, the palm worms devoured them. Yet have you not returned unto me, says the Lord. I have sent among you the pestilence after the manner of Egypt. You are young men have I slain with the sword and have taken away your horses. And I have overthrown some of you as God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. And you were as firebrand plucked out of the burning. Yet have you not returned unto me, says the Lord. Therefore thus will, will I do unto thee, O Israel. And because I will do this unto thee, prepare to meet thy God. Praise the Lord. See, this is, God is, say, is talking. Say, for lo, he that formed the mountains and created the wind and declared unto man what is his thought that maketh the morning darkness and treaded upon the high places of the, the earth. The Lord, the God of us, is his name. So God allowed all this to happen to the children of Israel so that they should, could return to him. But still they did not. They did not see their point of restoration. They did not know that for them to, for all this to be restored was just to go back to God. So that God can stop all that was happening. Haggai chapter, chapter 1 and verse 7. Haggai chapter 1 Verse 7. It says, Thy says the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. Go up to the mountain and bring wood and build the house, and I will take pleasure in it. And I will be glorified, says the Lord. So consider your ways. Consider your ways. Where did you derail from God's purpose? Where did you derail from God's calling? That caused God, instead of blessing you, that caused him to withhold, to take away all that even he had blessed you with. He says, go up to the mountain and bring wood and build the house and I will take pleasure in it and I will be glorified, says the Lord. Verse 9, we're going to verse 11. It says, you looked for much and lo, it came too little. And when you brought it home, I did blow it away. It was not the devil. It was not the enemy. It's God himself. You went, you worked hard. You did all you did to gather. But when you brought it home, God was waiting and he blew it away. Why? Let's go back to verse 9. I haven't finished. Why, says the Lord of hosts, because of my house that is waste and you run away and you run every man unto his own house. Therefore, the heaven over you is stayed from dew, and the earth is stayed from her fruits. And I called for drought, this is God himself, upon the land, and upon the mountains, and upon the corn, and upon the new wine, and upon the oil, and upon that which the ground bringeth forth, and upon men, and upon cattle, and upon all the labor of the hands. Hmm. Wow. Malachi chapter 2, verse 1 and 4. Our time is almost up. So I'm just rushing through the, the, the scripture. So that we, we want to know. We want to have that knowledge. That if you go against the will of God, God can cause all this suffering from us, to, to, 
to us. God can cause, can cause these things to happen to us. And he is just withholding them so that you can go back to him. You can consider your ways. You can go back to where you can think of where you went wrong and go back and be restored. So restoration is about considering your ways and going back to where you went wrong so that you can receive the restoration. You can only receive the restoration when you have gone back to where things started being wrong. So, and, I, I, and now, oh ye priests, this commandment is for you. We're going to up to verse 4. Verse 2. If you will not hear, and if you will not lay it to hear, to heart, to give glory unto my name, Says the Lord of hosts, I will even send a curse upon you and I will curse your blessings. Yeah, I will have cast them. I have already cast them because you do not lay it to heart. He blessed you, but you did not give glory to him. He is the one who gave you the blessing. You did not give him glory. So he sent a curse to that same blessing. Behold, I will corrupt your seed and spread dung upon your faces. Even the dung of your solemn feasts and one shall take you away with it. Verse 4. And ye shall know that I have sent this commandment unto you, that my covenant might be with Levi, says the Lord. Let's do um, the same Malachi chapter nine, chapter chapter three, verse seven. As I, this is my last scripture. Even from the days of your fathers, you are gone away from my ordinances, and have not kept them. Return unto me, and I will return unto you, says the Lord of hosts. But you say, Where, wherein shall we return? Verse 8. Verse 8. I think maybe Temi's screen has, has frozen. So. Verse 8. Malachi 3 verse 8. Will a man rob God, yet you are robbing me? But you say, how have we robbed you? In your tithes and contributions. And uh, this offering. This offering, yes. You are cursed with a curse, for you are robbing me, the whole nation of you. Bring the full tithe into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house, and thereby... Put me to test, to the test, says the Lord of hosts. If I will not open the windows of heaven for you and pour down for you a blessing until there is no more need. Mm. Verse 11, I will rebuke the devourer for you so that it will not destroy the fruits of your soil. Mm. And your vine in the field shall not fail to bear, says the Lord of hosts. Then all nations will call you blessed, for you will be a land of delight, says the Lord of hosts. This is now restoration. Verse 13. Your words have been heard against me. Your words have been stout against me, saith Jehovah. Yet ye say, what have we spoken? 
Verse 14. 14 yeah. Ye have said, it is vain to serve God, and what profit is it that we have kept his charge, and that we have walked mournfully before Jehovah of hosts. Yeah. You say, <laughs> you say you, we, have, we have served God, but what have we benefited? Mm -hmm. Serving God has become boring. Serving God has been, we have, you don't benefit from serving God. And see, that is also a sin. That also can cause God to release a devourer amongst you. Let's continue. We go, we go to verse 17 as we finish. Verse 17. Oh, just no, verse, oh, yeah. okay. verse uh, 15. Mm. And now we call the arrogant blessed evildoers not only prosper but they put God to the test and they escape. Then those who feared the Lord spoke with one another. The Lord paid attention and heard them. And a book of remembrance was written before him of those who feared the Lord and esteemed his name. They shall be mine, said the Lord of hosts, in the day when I make up my treasured possession, and I will spare them as a man spares his son who serves him. Amen. This verse, this verse 14 has really hit me hard. It says, you have said it is vain to serve God. And what profit is it that we have kept his ordinances and that we have walked mournfully before the Lord of hosts? And now we call the proud happy. See, you are, now you are com co co comparing yourself. The one that God has called, the one that God ordained before the beginning of the world. You are now comparing yourself to the wicked people. That now we call proud happy and, 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 and they that work wickedness are set up. Yet yeah, they that tempt God are even delivered. They are doing well. The sinners are doing well. We go, we serve God day and night. We, don't, we, 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 have, we serve God, we suffer. But the, 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 those people who don't serve God, they are doing well. They are, they are prospering. They are driving big cars. They are doing this. You start comparing yourself with those people. You don't know that there's judgment that is waiting for them. God has called us for his purpose. And he says, when those people who fear God were speaking, they talk to each other. God, the book of remembrance was, was opened. It was put into remembrance. Those who serve God, those who fear God, those who serve the purpose of God, those who walk in the ordinances of God. All the time when you meet, when you talk, when you talk about the, the goodness of God, when you fall, you talk about fulfilling the will of God, fulfilling the purpose of God. The book of remembrance, it is put into remembrance. It is put into the book and God reads it. And he says that they that fear the Lord speak up often one to another and the Lord hearkened and had it and a book of remembrance was written before him for them that fear the Lord and that thought upon his name and God says they shall be mine says the Lord of hosts in that day when I make up my jewels and I will spare them as a man spareth his own son that serveth him and they shall be mine Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Then shall you return and discern between the righteous and the wicked. Between him that served God and him that served him not. This is the place where God will restore us. When we stop doing what we are doing and do what God wants us to do. And do what God called us to do. God called us to work, to be a to, to, to work for the kingdom. 
But when we start complaining, but when we start comparing ourselves with the wicked people who are prospering, it hurts God. When we don't give glory to God, he curses our blessings. When we don't serve the purpose of God, he withdraws the anointing. He withdraws the grace. When we don't come back to God, when we don't come back to God's force for him to restore us, when we know, it's, it's, it's only when we will know the place to come back to, to get this restoration. And I believe tonight that God has opened our eyes that we can see where we can come and cry to God. He says in the book of Hosea, that sanctify a fast and cry before me. Sanctify a fast and cry before me, and I will hear you. Now, what is we, we, we bring the, uh, the senior pastor? Let's just go before God. Let's just ask God for mercy and let, let the Spirit of God open our eyes. You know, someone said, I'm, 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 I'm beginning to, someone told me, I'm beginning to suspect this Holy Spirit. He doesn't talk to me the way he used to talk to me. He doesn't direct me the way he used to direct me. He doesn't speak the way he used to speak. I say, don't suspect the Holy Spirit. Put your ways right. Put your ways right. Put yourself to the right track so that he can continue speaking to you. Because where you are, you cannot hear his language. You cannot understand his language. So this evening, we want to pray that the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will bring us back to his track. That we will be able to hear him. We will be able to know when he is speaking. That we will not suspect the Holy Spirit. We should not suspect him. We have to suspect ourselves and go back to the right track in the name of Jesus Christ. Let us stand up on our feet as we call upon the, the senior pastor to come and pray for us. Father God, we thank you. Lord, we are considering our ways tonight. We are considering our ways tonight that we may be totally restored in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. I have decided Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus, no turning back, no turning back. I have decided to follow Jesus. 